Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I'm going to be breaking down what the differences are, truly, between the Ethernet Smooth Stepper and CNC Drive's UC400 Ethernet controller. Um, I'm getting a lot of different questions, and I want to be as concise as possible because I know many of you are, you know, looking at the deciding factors between your choices, and ultimately, the control is essentially the same. What the difference mainly is, is that we have two different types of plugins that each unit uses. So right now I'm on warp9td.com, which is warp9 is the manufacturer for the ESS. And if you come over here, and I'll put links into the description of the video, you can see here it's describing what to do in terms of for PWM spindle control, for step and direction spindle, for uh, quadrature spindle control, and for uh, clockwise, counterclockwise spindle control. And this is the breakdown of the actual plugin, henceforth the firmware that these this particular board uses. And you can see here what's interesting, and I brought this up to many of my potential clients, is that a lot of the configuration constraints that you can set up directly through the ESS, you usually already have available through your most control software, be it Mach 3, Mach 4, UCC, and C, whatever it may be, you've already got those options. So really, doing individual drive frequency is not required. Um, motor tuning section in Mach 3 will allow motor tuning to set your uh, motors for different speeds and velocities, in, in which case you're essentially doing the same thing. So again, coming through this and looking at what you can set on this screen is once again essentially what can be controlled by your most control software. And even though Mach 3, and I get told a lot of times, is dated, you still have all of these features that you can go into Mach 3 and set up. Now, there are some people who would rather set it up through the ESS, and you're more than welcome to do so, and you would do so within this screen. But if we're comparing apples to apples in terms of stability of control, in terms of frequency operation, meaning will the UC400 and the ESS operate at the same frequency pending your drives will support it? Yes, 400 kilohertz is the actual frequency that the ESS tops out at as well as the UC400. Now, you can see here what the actual screen looks like for the plugin on the ESS. Let's take a look at the plugin for the UC400. I apologize for the picture being kind of blurry. I kind of blew it up. Um, but you can see here port 1, port 2, and then we have our buffer speed. And again, it'll be populated if you're running the actual uh, software. And then you can see your max step rate, which again, this is the kilohertz frequency in which you can adjust to actually correspond to the maximum frequency of the drives you're using. Now, what does the frequency actually determine? It determines the speed at which your motors will rotate. If you're looking at faster uh, configuration in terms of communication, the kilohertz rating is going to extrapolate that speed into your motors. Now, is it always going to translate into usable speed for your system? Not necessarily, because again, we have other variables and limitations that come into play other than just accelerating your motors. Can the transmission that's connected to the motors handle the additional speed? Are you going to get a lot of excessive G-force that you have to dissipate when you're machining by going starting you know, in a fast acceleration and then stopping abruptly? If you have that and you exceed the operational envelope of your system, you're going to have other issues when you go to machine. So therefore, most systems operate at about 100 kilohertz. If we go faster than that, that's fine. But again, motor tuning must be in place to naturally determine the operational envelope in which your machine is fast, but it's also holding its accuracy. Hopefully that all makes sense. Okay, buffer size you can adjust. Um, real basic check boxes here. Nothing here that is ridiculous in terms of redundant settings. Um, where it does get kind of ridiculous is when we come back over to the ESS, you can adjust your step and direction, uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, uh, quadrature for all axes, including your spindle. And that's really it. Now, as far as the plugins, that covers basically the difference between the plugins. Once again, you can see uh, the differential with the ESS as far as what it allows. And then what we'll see coming over here with the UC400. 
okay? Again, it's apples to apples, oranges to oranges in terms of frequency. What isn't um, the same would be the actual configuration of the plugin. You see how simple the UC400 is, and then when we come back over here, we see how more advanced the ESS is. The other physical difference between the two boards is the fact that the ESS allows for three connections using LPH26 cables for accessory boards. Let me explain. You see this port 3, port 1, and port 2. If you want to expand your system past one breakout board, and why I say one breakout board, we know that the ESS is a controller, but it needs to manipulate signals from a breakout board, and it must be connected. So you would use an LPH26 cable here to port 1, and that would allow that breakout board to once again use the ESS to send and receive its signals. However, some guys' systems require uh, more inputs or outputs or just general expansion. Therefore, they would connect another board to port 2. Now, do you ever require a port 3? Most do not. Now, why am I saying that? Well, I'm saying that to compare, once again, apples to apples. We look at the UC400. Once again, we have two ports. Okay? So, once again, you can connect your first breakout board and then any additional breakout board for additional inputs and outputs if your system requires it, relay boards, whatever it may be. You have two actual connections. And personally, I think CNC Drive did it correctly because most guys never use three connections. I've yet to see most people do that. Once again, you do have six axis support on both boards, whether it be ESS or UC400. And again, you can see the 400 kilohertz step frequency operation. So again, they're essentially the same thing. They still use the LPH26 cables. You can see once again, the UC400 has got the two ports here, also has its uh, LPH 26 port. So it's really just a question of which way you guys want to go. Now, the other variable, and this is minor, extremely minor, is that the ESS uses a 5 volt power supply. It must use a 5 volt input to actually power the board. Now, the UC 400 has a step down converter built into it that can use up to 24 volts. So, thinking about it like that, it really expands what that system can use. And, so, and for some systems, it makes it easier if you don't want to have to install an additional power supply in your system. And let's say, for instance, you're already using 24 volts to power your steppers. You can use that same power supply to power your UC400. So, again, we're, we're reducing our EMI potential. And, again, you can see why I usually keep these systems separate, although I am offering UC400 now integrated inside of a controller. So it's really just a question, then, of which device you prefer. Now, the other fair assessment is cost. The ESS is without a doubt the most costly Ethernet controller on the market, hands down. It is manufactured in the U.S., um, and considering the fact that it's a bare board, it's a substantial investment. The bare board usually goes for an excess of 200 bucks. Um, and then on top of that, you need an enclosure or you're going to mount it in your enclosure, power supply, whatever type of shielded Ethernet cable you're going to use. And I highly recommend a double shielded cable. And then on top of that, you know, doing all the final uh, configuration as far as if you're going to mount it externally, I offer a turnkey package and I'll put links in the description with the enclosure incorporated and the entire unit in a turnkey fashion. It's not cheap, guys. When you look at the UC400, cost uh, cost prohibited Ethernet control as far as you know looking at the market it's without a doubt one of the best investments you'll get it's significantly less than the ESS and it offers once again the general principles of operation with the stability so if you're looking at the ultimate in control and stability Ethernet is going to be your number one investment. If you're using a UC100, if you're using any USB motion controller, if you're using just a USB breakout board, those are not going to typically be as stable. And why they're not is that you're dealing with 5 volt voltage. I've said this in many different videos which is very susceptible to EMI and grounding issues. Therefore, if you experience loss of signal, any type of signal interruption for that matter, 
you're going to potentially create what's known as blems, which where basically you'll be using your robot and the next thing you know as you're cutting, you might lose uh, signal intermittently and the robot stop, it trigger an e-stop or you know it could be cutting and then you have to hopefully match the same cut where you started. It can lead into a lot of problems. So my general advice for anyone running a business or where they want to eliminate that potential from the get-go, you always invest in an Ethernet control option. First of all, you also then have your option to use a desktop or a, a laptop and also use any Windows operating system for control so you're not forced to once again use 32-bit Windows XP or Windows Vista for your operating system. That's a huge advantage, guys. Just in the sense that you don't have to worry about using older software to support newer hardware. And then if something you know is that old, typically you have other driver configuration issues. So just keep that in mind for your system. It's really just a question of what you want to work with. But I'm telling you right now, in simplicity, the UC400 is excellent. The other thing to keep in mind about the UC400 that I find to be uh a really unique investment is not only the price of the unit, then factoring in that you can purchase UC, CNC motion control software for an additional $60, that's a huge bonus for somebody just getting started and wanting to keep their overhead as low as possible. So again, you've got your choice. Uh, I offer both. I'm, I'm not partial to one or the other. It depends on your application. I tell all my clients the same thing. As a matter of fact, um, just this weekend I had a client purchase an ESS, and I always let everybody know, do you really need it? Is this something you really need? And I gave him the option. You can purchase the UC400 or the ESS. He felt he wanted to go with the ESS. So be it. You know, I mean, I want you guys to realize what you're buying, but most of the time, like I said, the differences are so minute. And how many are you going to exceed, you know, hooking up two boards for inputs and outputs and all your control? Very few. So keep that in mind. I hope the video has been helpful. Thank you for your support.